गुड मॉर्निंग रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट एज अ पोइट ऑफ नेचर द की नोट ऑफ फ्रॉस्ट पोइटिक फिलोसफी एंड स्टाइल इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द रिमार्क्स ऑफ डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू गिब्सन उसे इज फ्रॉस्ट हैज़ टर्न द लिविंग स्पीच ऑफ अ मैन एंड वुमेन इन टू पोइट्री टेल्स दैट माइट बी मेयर एनेकडोट्स इन द हैंड्स ऑफ अनदर पोइट take a universal significance because of their native veracity and truth to local character and quote frost has won many laurels for the variety in his poems and also for the simplicity in terms of language style and symbols in his poems frost wears different masks in each of his poems he puts on the mask of a child a carefree boy a witty rural philosopher a realist or a sensitive poet but whatever mask he wore he wore it with utmost integrity and sincerity <coughs> frost is widely acknowledged as a world poet and he continues to be one of the oft quoted poets of all times Frost has been widely acclaimed as a nature poet, a pragmatic philosopher, a realist, a pastoral poet and so on. He wears many crowns and acknowledgments. He is a chameleon who glides in and out of the many facets of his personality. Yet Frost is not a complex poet, neither is he a complex man. the romantics humanize nature and attach strong emotional values in landscape for example wordsworth stressed on the harmony that exists between man and nature while frost harps on the difference between man and nature wordsworth is concerned with the inner exploration of nature but frost with the precise outlining of a character outside of himself for wordsworth the inner eye of the soul perceives the harmony of the universe when he says quote while we with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy we see into the power of things unquote frost did not idealize nature and his nature poems are marked by realism in conception and description of nature he conceives nature as merely matter frost is a nature poet with a difference no discourse on nature poets or nature poems is possible without a mention of one of the great nature poets that is wordsworth the brightest star of the romantic age a brief comparison shows that wordsworth and frost have attempted to serve as a sieve to bring out frost with pra- the pragmatic philosopher both frost and wordsworth were nature poets and were inspired by nature and the most profound pensive thoughts images symbols and expressions flowed spontaneously in the midst of nature at the same time it is an undisputed fact that the way they responded to nature was different <coughs> in frost's own words quote we have had nature poetry for 100 years now we must have the human foreground with it unquote he is not just concerned with nature as such he is more concerned with the common human activity that goes on in her lap wordsworth mystified nature and to him nature was bo- both law and impulse he pictured nature as a benign mother teacher and guide and emphasized the harmony of man and nature let nature be your teacher unlike wordsworth frost loves both nature's pleasant as well as unpleasant aspects he enjoys her sense of beauty he is also alive much that is harsh bleak and barren in her frost does not deny the sensuous enjoyment he derives from nature but that does not make him turn a blind eye <coughs> to the possible danger and destructive side of nature
the traveler in stopping by woods on a snowy evening enjoys the charm and beauty of the woods but frost also depicts nature as cold and strange and he is aware of the constantly changing weather of april he feels the lurking presence of something hostile and sinister the poet's sensitivity is evident in the lines be glad of water but don't forget the lurking frost in the earth beneath that will steal forth after the sun is set and show on the water his crystal teeth nature for wordsworth was not only a source of joy and inspiration it was a major source of his moral health and well-being nature was to wordsworth the anchor of his parent thought a kindly nurse a doting mother and soul of his moral being so wordsworth spiritualized nature and his nature was wrapped with layers of profound wisdom one impulse from a vernal wood may teach you more of man of moral evil and of good than all the ages frost takes on a different stance he is modern and realistic in his attitude towards nature for him nature is only a background which provides him poetic occasion to clarify human experience frost in an interview in 1952 said quote i guess i am not a nature poet i have written only two poems without a human being in them unquote therefore he doesn't see nature with an eye of the romantics nature is different from man and yet their existence is intertwined frost doesn't seek an escape into the arms of mother nature though there is the eternal conflict between man's sense of duty and his tendency to escape from man's day to day mundane existence and also from the turmoil of life frost was never an escapist not fleeing from the realities of life he is more of a traveler an adventurer all eager and excited to suck in the beauty of nature but also aware of the dangers ruthlessness and destructive power of nature he wants man to enjoy the charm and mystery of nature but doesn't want man to give up his worldly life too in the beautiful poem birches he wants man to be a swinger of birches i'd like to get away from earth a while and then come back to it and begin over may no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what i wish and snatch me away not to return earth's the right place for love thank you we'll continue this topic in our next class thank you